Chapter 5, Watchfulness. Allah the Exalted says in the Quran, Who sees you when you stand up alone at night for prayers. And your movements among those who fall prostrate. And Allah also says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ And He is with you by His knowledge wheresoever you may be. And Allah also says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Truly, nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or in the heaven. And Allah also says, Verily your Lord is ever watchful. And Allah also says, Allah knows the fraud of the eyes and all that the breasts conceal. 60. Omar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu said, Once we were sitting in the company of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when there appeared a man dressed in very white clothes and having extraordinary black hair. No signs of fatigue of journey appeared on him, and he was known to none of us. He sat down facing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, leaning his knees against the knees of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and placing both of his palms over his two thighs, and said, "O Muhammad, tell me about Islam." He sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied. Islam is to testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's messenger. That you observe salah, pay zakat, observe saum of Ramadan and perform hajj to the house provided you have the resources of making the journey to it. He replied, you have spoken the truth. We were surprised to see that he had asked him and confirmed the correctness of the answer. He then inquired, Tell me about Iman. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, It is to believe in Allah and his books and his messengers and the last day and that you believe in foreordainment its bad and good consequences. He said, You have spoken the truth. He then inquired, Tell me about Ihsan. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, It is to worship Allah as if you are seeing Him. And although you do not see Him, He sees you. He inquired, Inform me about the hour meaning the day of resurrection. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, I have no more knowledge thereof than you. He said, Inform me about some of its signs. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, They are that a bondswoman gives birth to her own master, and that you will find the barefooted, naked, Poor shepherds competing one another in the construction of higher buildings. Then he departed. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept silent for a while. Then he said to me, O Omar, do you know who the questioner was? I replied, Allah and his Messenger know better. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He was Jibreel. He came to teach you your religion, collected by Muslim. Commentary 
This hadith is known as the Hadith of Jibreel. It mentions the basics of Islam, the details of which are known to every Muslim. Al-Qadr, divine foreordainment, means that Allah already knows and had recorded everything that will happen until the day of resurrection. Now, whatever happens is in accordance with that knowledge and writing. What is meant by its good and bad consequences can be illustrated by saying that tranquility, prosperity, and abundance of crops come in the category of good consequences. Famine, calamities, and troubles fall in the list as evil consequences. But we regard them good or bad according to our own understanding. Otherwise, every action of Allah has some wisdom and expedience which are known to Him alone. 61. Abu Dhar and Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhuma reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fear Allah wherever you are. Do good deeds after doing bad ones. The former will wipe out the latter and behave decently towards people. Collected by a tirmidhi. Commentary. Virtue obliterates vice means that virtue becomes an atonement for sin. But this applies to minor sins only because major ones will not be forgiven without sincere repentance. Similar is the case of encroachment on public rights, which will not be forgiven without their compensation. 62. Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma said, One day I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, O oh boy, I will instruct you in some matters. Be watchful of Allah, he will protect you. Safeguard his rights, he will be ever with you. If you beg, beg of him alone. And if you need help, supplicate to Allah alone for help. And remember that if all the people gather to benefit you, they will not be able to benefit you except that which Allah had foreordained for you. And if all of them gather to do harm to you, they will not be able to afflict you with anything other than that which Allah had predestined against you. The pens have been lifted and the ink had dried up, collected by a tirmidhi. Another narration is, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Safeguard the commandments of Allah, you will find him before you. Remember him in prosperity, and he will remember you in adversity. Be sure that which you miss was not going to hit you, and what hits you was never to miss you. Remember that the help of Allah is obtained with patience, and relief emerges after distress. Prosperity follows adversity, and hardship is followed by ease. Commentary Number one, no one has the power to change the decision of Allah. Number two, whatever trouble one has to suffer in this world, it does not last forever. Every trouble is followed by prosperity, pleasure, and happiness. Number three, one should never ask other than Allah anyone's help in a supernatural way because it amounts to ascribing partnership with Allah. If a person is mindful of the rights of Allah, then Allah in return takes care of his needs and helps him. 63. Anas radiyallahu anhu said, You indulge in bad actions which are more insignificant to you than a hair. While we considered them at the time of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be great destroying sins. Collected by Al-Bukhari. Commentary. 
The less fear of Allah one has, the more disobedient he becomes to him. As the fear of Allah decreases, one becomes more bold in committing sins. As the companions of the Prophet وسلم, were intensely fearful of Allah, they were afraid of committing even very minor sins. 64. Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu reported, The Prophet وسلم, said, Verily, Allah the Exalted becomes angry and his anger is provoked when a person does what Allah has declared unlawful. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary Commitment of unlawful acts causes the displeasure of Allah and may bring about his wrath. 65 Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu said, that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, There were three men among Banu Israel, one leper, one bald, and one blind. Allah wanted to test them. He therefore sent to them an angel who came to the leper and asked him what he would like best. He replied, A good color, a good skin, and to be rid of what makes me loathsome to people. The angel rubbed him, and his loathsomeness vanished, and he was given a good color and a good skin. He then asked him what type of property he would like best. The leper replied that he would like camels. He was given a pregnant she-camel. The angel invoked for Allah's blessing on it. The angel then went to the bald man and asked him what he would like best. And he replied, Good hair and to be rid of what makes me loathsome to people. The angel ran his hand over him and he was given good hair. He then asked him what property he would like best. He replied that he would like cattle. So he was given a pregnant cow. The angel invoked Allah's blessing on it. The angel then went to the blind man and asked him what he would like best. And he replied, I wish that Allah would restore to me my sight so that I may see the people. Thereupon, the angel ran his hand over him and Allah restored his sight. The angel then asked what property he would like best. He replied that he would like sheep, so he was given a pregnant ewe. Flocks and herds were produced for the three men, the first having a valley full of camels, the second one a valley full of cows, and the third one full of sheep. Then the angel came in the form of a leper to the one who had been a leper and said, I am a poor man and my resources have been exhausted in my journey, and my only means of reaching my destination are dependent on Allah and then on you. So I ask you by him who gave you the good color, the good skin, and the property for a camel by which I may get to my destination. He replied, I have many dues to pay. The angel then said, I think I recognize you. Were you not a leper whom people found loathsome and a poor man to whom Allah gave property? He replied, I inherited this property through generations. The angel said, If you are telling a lie, may Allah return you to your former condition. The angel went in the form of a bald man to the one who had been bald and said the same as he had said to the former and received a similar reply. So he said, If you are telling a lie, may Allah return you to your former condition. The angel then went to the one who had been blind and said, I am a poor traveler and my resources have been exhausted in my journey. 
my only means of reaching my destination are dependent on Allah and then on you. So I ask you by him who restored your eyesight for a sheep by which I may get to the end of my journey. He replied, yes, I was blind. Allah restored my eyesight, so take what you wish and leave what you wish. I swear by Allah, I shall not argue with you today to return anything you take, as I give it for Allah's sake. The angel said, keep your property. You have all simply been put to a test, and Allah is pleased with you and displeased with both of your companions. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary. This hadith tells us that abundance of property and wealth is also a trial. He alone succeeds in this trial, who in the midst of his riches does not forget about Allah's status and his own status. Rather than becoming proud of his wealth, he takes pleasure in spending it in fulfilling the needs of people and expresses gratitude to him in practical terms. Those who take an opposite course are regarded unsuccessful on account of their wrong attitude. They tend to falsehood, pride and miserliness, which cause the displeasure of Allah. 66. Shaddad ibn Aws radiyallahu anhu reported, the Prophet sallallahu said, a wise man is the one who calls himself to account and refrains from doing evil deeds and does noble deeds to benefit him after death. And the foolish person is the one who subdues himself to his temptations and desires and seeks from Allah the fulfillment of vain desires. Collected by Ittirmini. Commentary. This hadith highlights the importance of the accountability of oneself. Mere desires which are not coupled with practical effort are of no avail because Allah grants reward on good deeds and not on yearnings and desires which are not supported by noble actions. 67. Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, It is from the excellence of a believer's Islam that he should shun that which is of no concern to him. Collected by Ittirmini. Commentary. This hadith lays down a very important principle that one should avoid senseless talk and actions. If one acts upon this principle, he can save himself from many sins and evils.